Welcome to the Statistic NED YouTube channel. Today I am excited to show you a tool that can enhance your data analysis workflows and your programming experience. It's Shiny Gadgets. And to my knowledge, Shiny Gadgets are far less popular and less well known in the R community than Shiny Apps. So you may know of Shiny Apps, but maybe not about Shiny Gadgets. So here I have an R Markdown. Um, presentation prepared. It's a sharing and presentation built on top of Markdown and I'll knit it live to show you what the shiny gadgets can do. So I click on it and we see it runs through and then this browser window opens and I get a simple plot. Forgive me for using the, the infamous empty cars data set for this example. We have horsepower on the x-axis and uh, miles per gallon on the y-axis and here I have the option of selecting points. So I just do that using the mouse and I select these five points, five cars with the highest horsepower. And then I click on done and we'll see later what the return value will be. The second example here is the same plot again, a scatter plot of the empty car status set, horsepower on the x-axis, miles per gallon on the y-axis. And in this case, I can click on points to label them. So again, I use these five data points that we just saw to label them. Um, so a very convenient way of obtaining a labeled plot um, with only some labels applied of cases that I find most interesting. And you see that even when I click or unclick data points, the position of the labels changes because in the background the ggrepel package is used to avoid overlapping labels. So let's label these five points. I click on done again and we'll see in a few moments what the return will be. I get this presentation back. Um, and I open it in the browser again. So this video is about cool helpers in data analysis, shiny gadgets, a lesser known side of shiny. So let's see what this presentation contains now. So the first example was, it's called brush points. So I selected these five cars with the highest horsepower and now in the report, I get a subset of the data. The data is filtered for these selected points and we get these cars with the high uh, numbers for horsepower. Note that this is not my code, but I took it from um, the RStudio website. The uh, brush points example is put there. I adapted the code a little bit, but I'll show you that in a moment. The second example was the ggLabel example, and now the report contains this labeled plot. So the next time I knit the report, I can click on different points and get a different plot back. So a very convenient way of um, highlighting outliers, for example, and labeling them. Right, so let's look at it in a bit more detail. One code example, I won't bore you in this video too much, but we want to have a quick look at the code. So it's a shiny, it's a sort of a shiny app, but a little bit different. We use the mini UI package um, to create this shiny gadget. And the one key difference to a usual shiny app is that the whole app is embedded in a regular R function. In this case, it's called ggbrush. So it's a regular function call and inside that function, we have a user interface and a server function. So here's the UI on the left hand side. And contrary to Shiny, this uses a function from the mini UI package. It's a mini page. So the idea is that Shiny gadgets don't take the full space of, of a full screen. It was the case in my presentation, but you can use it in regular R scripts during data analysis. And then the gadget just runs in the viewer pane. So it's smaller than, and we have this mini page function from the mini UI package. On the right hand side, we see there's also a server function similar to a shiny app. We have a render plot function to create the plot, observe events to check whether the done button has been pressed and then um, the app is stopped to return the brushed points. Contrary to a shiny app, we have the run gadget function instead of run app here. And the app is started using this regular function call, in this case, the ggbrush function. So, um, this code is taken from the RStudio website, but I adapted it a little bit. Um, it has some old coding style to flexibly pass variables to ggplot. They use the AES underscore string function, which is not encouraged anymore. And I changed that to the more modern approach using the double curly braces. Curly curly, it is called, to pass variables to ggplot. Right. Um, we're almost done. I'd like to contrast shiny gadgets to shiny apps now. So you may be more familiar with shiny apps. So shiny apps are used to present the output of an analysis. 
the audience, the intended audience is an end user and often Shiny apps are hosted on a server. Contrary to that, Shiny gadgets are used during analysis. They are not designed for end users, but for our users, for us, so to say, for data analysts and so on. So the goal is to enhance our programming experience. So that's really nice to have, I think. A few closing words, a few resources. The second example I showed you was ggLabeler. That's actually an R package, so you can easily use that for your own data analysis. It's written by Alicia Shep, so all credit to her. You can install the package from her GitHub profile. As far as I know, it's not on CRAN. I haven't checked that now, but I think it's only on GitHub. Um, and you can make some customizations to these Shiny gadgets. For example, there's a viewer parameter in the run gadget function, and you can specify a pine. Um, the viewer pane or a dialog, you can adjust the width and height, but the key idea is to not have a full page, but just um, have it in the viewer pane so that you can run your analysis and still see your R code and so on. Um, there are some resources that are linked to here. The key resource, the starting point is the RStudio website, so all credit to RStudio for supplying us with so many resources and useful functions and packages. There's a webinar by Gary Grolemont and a presentation by Hadley Wickham. Um, I try to follow events in the R community as closely as I can. I read the R Weekly newsletter and I haven't read any new developments regarding um, shiny gadgets in a long time. So I'd really like to know if you're using them already or if you intend to use them and if you already use them, what your use cases are. Maybe you've written your own ch um, shiny gadgets. So I'd really like to know um, Leave me a comment uh, and tell me how you use them or if you intend to integrate them in your workflows. So yeah, that was it for today, basically. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. All the best for your data analysis. Check out my other videos. Have fun. See you next time. Ciao.